Hello, my name is Tiffany. I'm one of the doctors who's on the uh, committee for the Surgical Academy. Today, I'm going to give you a short introduction to your core surgical training applications. It's going to complement other tutorials that are going to be happening in December time and will hopefully provide a little bit of ease for those who are applying for core surgical training this year or next year. It is being recorded. So if you do miss anything or you're not able to make today's session, that's absolutely fine. We'll be uploading the recording and we'll also be sending the slides to all candidates who are viewing today. So just to begin with, we're going to run through the timeline. At the moment, we are at the stage of applications being open. Applications for core surgical training opened the 4th of November and we have until the 1st of December to submit. After you've submitted your core surgical training applications, you will then upload your evidence and be invited to your interviews. You preference which jobs in which locations you would like and then hopefully your offers are released. So the core surgical training application process, it takes place at a national level. Northern Ireland applications are done separately. So the ones that we're talking about are coordinated by Health Education Kent, Surrey and Sussex. The application window opens every year, as we've discussed, at the start of November. We submit applications via Oriel. I'm hoping by this point in time, those of you who are applying this year, you've looked at the self-assessment questionnaire. And once you've submitted, your scores are verified and approximately 1,100 candidates are invited to interview. Now, after the candidates are invited to interview, each deanery releases the number of jobs that they have available. Now, this number varies each year, and it might not actually be confirmed until the last minute. So we've got this table here, and it just shows you the average number of CST jobs per deanery over the last three years. Of course, the competition ratio varies between each job. And if you have a certain specialty that you'd like to pursue, that may affect which location you can work in. Um, so once you have submitted your application, you will rank your preference and it's the interview and your portfolio that will determine how highly you rank. Competition ratios. So each year, the competition to get into core surgical training has been increasing. So for 2021, so last year's applicants, there was a competition ratio of 4.6 to 1. So that essentially means every out of every 4.6 applicants, there was one who was successfully appointed to an interview post. 35% of those that applied were actually invited to interview. And of those that were invited to interview, 63% were successfully appointed. So if you do get to your interview stage, that means you're in a good standing to hopefully try and get into your um, core surgical training post. Of note, these competition ratios don't affect, don't uh, refer to whether or not you're going to be offered a job in your first deanery and they're not uh, specialty specific. So certain deaneries, as we've discussed, they are more competitive. And if you want a certain uh, location and specialty, you may need to uh, score extra highly at the interview stage. So self-assessment is part of your initial application. So if you're applying for your 2022 core surgical training, you will complete the self-assessment questionnaire as part of your application. Then those who are shortlisted will then have the opportunity to upload evidence to support their answers. And these will be validated by someone on the interview panel before your actual interview date. The scores from this self-assessment make up a huge proportion of your interview score. So this year, they're not going to have a station within the interview that talks through your portfolio. So what you submit is what you will uh, get for a portfolio score. Of course, if you mess up the, uh, the way that you upload your evidence, then you can lose marks, but we'll discuss that later on. If you haven't already done so, make sure you read the self-assessment scoring guide for candidates. This goes through in detail what you can do to boost your portfolio and um, what evidence is required. For those of you who are worried about portfolios at this point in time, there's not a huge amount that you can do to boost your portfolio with a matter of days left to, um, to submit. If you're F1 medical student, we have a separate video where we actually break down the 2021 uh, core surgical training application 
components of the portfolio section. So if you just watch that, that goes through everything in a lot of detail. There were very, very minor changes from last year to this year. So I think they changed the number of surgical procedures. They increased it slightly from last year. And it's very small changes. So for example, from a teaching point of view, if um, it was local versus national, that kind of thing. But basically the actual sections very much remain the same. If you're trying to squeeze in a few last points, things you can try and do if you're lucky, you can present any of your pending audits locally. And if you've not been going to theater, go to theater and get your final surgical case log in. If you can try and squeeze in 40 operations in a week, that will get you your maximum points. So what next? So we've touched on is the process whereby we check that the applicant actually meets the minimum requirements to be eligible for core surgical training. So what that means is, are you actually a foundation year doctor? If you're not doing the foundation program, you may be asked to upload what's called a crest form. You can message us specifically for that kind of thing in detail. Uh -huh. um, so the crest form is something that's completed by consultants. And essentially, that's done to show that you're meeting the minimum foundation competencies. Um, we can help you. So just email if you're not sure about what to do for that. So as the number of expected applications for core surgical training exceeds the maximum capacity for both evidence verification and remote interviews, shortlisting then happens in two stages for uh, core surgical training recruitment. Your first stage is, used, um, is using the self-assessment scoring, and that's provided via your Oriel application. That essentially determines whether or not you progress to the evidence verification stage. So if you score highly enough in your initial application, you'll then be um, invited to upload your evidence for your claimed score. And the time window for that is usually between the 23rd of December and the 7th of January. It may change, so just keep an eye on all of your messages from Oriel. After applicants have provided further instructions about how to actually upload your evidence to the portal, um, you should make sure that the evidence you present is within the requested format. So if they ask you to upload everything in one PDF, make sure you compress all your files into one PDF document. If you don't upload the evidence as you're supposed to, you could end up with your evidence being completely rejected or you could end up losing many, many points. So I know of a few people who last year they lost national prizes. There's many people who did not log their e-log books correctly. Um, so if you're going to theatre and you've got your e-log book, you need to make sure that it's a consultant who has signed off your e-log book at the final stage. And it needs to be dated and it needs to include the GMC number. After you've gone through your long listing and your evidence upload is then verified. So what that means is consultant surgeons will verify the logbook against the self-assessment scoring criteria. If your evidence doesn't match what your self-assessment score is, the verified score will then be adjusted. Sometimes that will go up, sometimes that will go down. Be careful if you're considering overscoring yourself because that's considered a probity issue with the GMC. Um, once they've completed your verification, you will be sent your verified score and it will be sent with the panel's feedback regarding any changes to the score. If you feel that your score was unfair and you disagree with what it's, it's become, you can appeal. So appealing doesn't necessarily actually change your score. It just means that a different assessor will read through your um, portfolio and they'll re-review it and go from there. Importantly, all of those appeals have to be done within 72 hours of your score being received. No additional evidence can be submitted once you've had um, your evidence submitted via the portal. So the interview. So the interview is booked through Oriel. Once you've received your uh, message, make sure that you book your slot quickly because they are offered on a first come first serve basis and you have to book them within a deadline. So this year, the interview dates are likely to be between the 7th and the 18th of February. Anyone here who's uh, applied to sit the MRCS Part B exam, be a bit wary because that's going to be between the 5th and the 20th of February. So you don't want the two to clash to, or ideally not be within the same week. Um, once you've booked, you can then start practicing. 
Um, and eventually you then have your interview. So on the interview day, you will log into your Microsoft Teams, log in at least five minutes early. You'll then be put into this waiting room and eventually you'll then go through to your interview. Don't faff too much, just quick introduction, if int introducing at all, and go straight to the point. So the interview format, you have two stations this year. It used to be three years, uh, three stations. Um, it used to be section one management, section two clinical scenario, section three portfolio. But due to COVID, they have um, kind of gotten rid of the portfolio station. So you still get your marks for the portfolio section. And that's entirely based on the evidence that you've provided. You just don't have to bring up your portfolio physically to a room and you don't sit there with um, your consultants going through it. So you've got your two 20 minute stations. Your first is your management section. That's a 10 minute section. And your second is a clinical scenario station. Between the two, there's no break. And it's all one big session essentially because the interviewers don't change. Um, it's usually two consultants and then they might be a lay representative. Basically what that means is an, ord an ordinary person and they're just there to make sure that the interview itself is fair and there's no kind of bias or sort of prodding with mean questions or anything like that. So the first station is your management station. So this is split even further. So you have one prepared three minute uh, presentation that you will prepare before your interview day. Um, you'll receive a presentation title with instructions via Oriel as part of the invitation to the interview. You then have two minutes of questioning on presentation, and then they will change the questions around. So you'll get another management scenario question. The reason they ask you this is to see how quickly can you think on your feet? And you'll be given five minutes to answer that question. So this is how the management section is scored. So they look at the content, your presentation skills, and the questioning. For your next question, they look at the probity and professional integrity and awareness of safety and ethics. They look at how you judge situations under pressure and how you prioritize the situation, be it patient care or dealing with a difficult scenario. And they lastly look at your communication skills. We are sending out slides, so you will be provided with this. The next station is your clinical section, and that includes two clinical scenarios, each of which is about five minutes. And in this section, you're given questions in the interview. And again, here they are asking you questions. You're not pre-preparing these questions necessarily. Um, but the idea is that you can think on your feet. Scoring is similar. So they want to know your clinical skills and your knowledge, your judgment under pressure and your communication. After the interview, we make offers and um, you preference which job you would like. Usually this all happens in uh, March. Um, when an offer is made, you have 48 hours to either accept or reject the offer. So keep an eye on your phone, keep an eye on your emails so you don't miss an offer. You'll then be allocated to your core surgical training post. Your references will then be contacted and you will have completed and hopefully accepted your core surgical training post. So we have very, very briefly touched on the core surgical training interview. So we have another session being organized by Dr. Palut, he's one of the other committee members. And during that, he's going to explain a little bit about common scenarios, how you can prepare, um, and what resources we advise. We're getting a lot of questions in the chat regarding what resources. So a lot of the people who are in London at the moment, they used Medibody, so that's an online question bank. Um, and from a sort of topic point of view, things that you want to be covering are your ATLS and your CRISP manuals. If you haven't done either of those courses, that's fine, especially because of COVID, there's a massive, massive waiting list for even SHOs to try and get onto this course. Um, but you might be able to find a copy of the manual online or from a friend, just read through them. Um, you want They want to know that you're a safe doctor. So things they want to be checking for will be, do you escalate? a sick patient to your consultant or an anaesthetist if required? Do you know which patients need to be going to ITU? Do you know how to manage common or emergency situations? So do you know how to manage head injury, major hemorrhages? What would you do if a patient's presenting with certain uh, massive traumatic injuries? That kind of thing. Secondly, after the tutorial, where we go into a lot more depth about all of this, 
we are offering mock interviews. They're only £50 for a mock. And in the mock interview, just depending on when you book, um, if it's December time, you can have a clinical, uh, a management and a clinical section. And for the third, you can either opt to go through your portfolio with somebody to make sure you don't drop marks accidentally, or you can opt to do a second of the other two stations, depending on whatever you feel most worried or weak with. Here are a few of the useful links. If you mess up your application in some way, that's common. People tick the wrong boxes. We've had many people messaging us because they've had issues. Um, we're not the ones who will fix it, on, but these are numbers that can help. Um, just a little thing I touched on earlier regarding people uploading incorrect things for their portfolio and dropping marks. If you're uploading evidence, um, it might be a good idea to not just upload the one evidence you have that meets that criteria. So if, what I mean by that is if you have a national essay prize and you have other local prizes, um, upload everything because there's someone from, again, I know last year who uploaded their prize that got rejected, but they didn't upload the uh, local prize they had. But because the first was rejected, they lost all their points um when they could have potentially gotten points for the local prize little things like that will make a difference to your score if you have any questions don't hesitate to contact us and we will do our best to help you we are here to, for you